Bible, Koran, whatever books, ancient books talk about these natural systems. And it's amazing, some people have done some correlations between some of the, some of the prohibited behaviors in some of these books. And over time, people have learned, you know, that village did that, and they all died. So we're not going to do this anymore, all right? And so that kind of thinking, again, has actually been embedded in a lot of cultures. What we're doing today is we're growing so fast and we're moving so fast that we don't have time even to observe the negative consequences of some of these behaviors. And they're not contained. Uh, 500 years ago, if a village did something and all the people perished, it was local. Right? Today, we move things around the world and scale things up. by a designer who called himself a design scientist called Buckminster Fuller. Has anyone heard of Buckminster Fuller? Uh, quite an individual. He was considered an eccentric in his day, although he was quite a genius. But his definition, which he related to his personal purpose, he said, you can't, you can't do this out here. You've got to make it part of yourself. And that's where you go from the, the seeing to beginning to do things differently. Uh, his, definition is to make the world work for 100% of humanity, that's equity, in the shortest time possible through spontaneous cooperation without ecological offense or damage to anyone. I think that's a pretty good definition of sustainability. Right? If you live by a code such as this. And I, I think that's, again, where we need to head. In the doing part of it, if you look at icebergs, and you know, in 1912, Titanic ran into an iceberg because they didn't think about some of the unintended consequences of this big, powerful, quote unquote, in the newspapers, unsinkable ship. Well, it learned a, they learned a lesson very quickly in the first voyage. Uh, they weren't thinking about what they weren't seeing. All right? They were just doing without seeing. And if you look at the systems, you have to look at everything, even the things that you can't see right away. That's a, the things that are not obvious. That's why and by others, and it's very much related to self-preservation, all right? You, you hoard food if you're a hunter-gatherer, and you take as much as you can as fast as you can, uh, because you may not find another animal or find another area to, to gather food for a long period of time. So we're designed physiologically and psychologically to basically value that kind of first, the first thing we see in hoarding. Uh, and the studies are beginning to show that you know, this is really true. Uh, and that's something, again, we have to be as societies cognizant of. Because as our societies have grown and expanded through these agricultural how we as a society, and perhaps as individuals, define wealth. Right? That's a challenge that I think is really laid before us today. And the doing side of things, in terms of strategies, again, there needs to be an order in which we work with the capital. Now, there, there are uh, the idea of natural capital, human capital, physical capital, and financial capital 
are all embedded in our early economic model. Uh, the individual who is credited with this model is Adam Smith, who in 1850 or 1756 wrote The Wealth of Nations. And that was the full book title was The Wealth of Nations, the, an inquiry into the nature and the cause of the wealth of nations. Uh, and uh, so what we need to do again is, is look at the order. Given the limited resources and financial capital available, make a focus of form investment in the technical and especially the social innovations that generate the highest return okay, in this order. Highest return for the environment. What's the highest return for society? Then the highest return for the economy. We don't do that. Uh, we highly discount the environment and largely discount society and focus on economic models first. If you look at a business plan, show me where they are talking about the return on investment for the environment, return on investment for society. What are the metrics? All right. You don't see that. That's what I'm trying to get my students to do, actually to generate business plans where they look at the metrics of those returns. Once you begin to think that way, you have to think about costs. And once you think about costs, you have to include the cost into your transaction. It changes the way you think about what's a good 